Sure. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on March 10th, 2024. I'm Larry Rhodes or DJ Doubter 5. And as usual, we have a co-host on the line with us, DJ Wombat. Welcome, Wombat. Another weekend to do work and catch up on the corporate lifestyle and catch a head. No, wait, you know, I'm just going to procrastinate. <laughs> yeah, and do it an hour early, by the way. Yeah, I believe in a work-life <laughs> separation. Yeah, and daylight savings time is gone. Anyway, uh, welcome uh, to our guest, R- River Song. Welcome. Hello. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religions, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Mm -hmm. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of 1,100 of us. Wow. Uh, We're the Atheist Society Mm -hmm. of Knoxville, or ASK, and we'll tell you more about us after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? Woke, (laughs) W-O-K-E. The word that we hear, the word that some people jeer, and the word that sometimes (laughs) means to leer (laughs) (laughs) in a bad way. (laughs) That needs to be talked about. It's got so many different definitions out there floating around. I think so. I think so. I think that's very true. But before we jump into that, how about we just catch up? It's been a couple of weeks since we had a last uh, chat. Uh, It's a quick update for me. I had a piece of paperwork I was looking for. Uh, I knew where it was the hour or the night, truly the night before I needed it. And then I wake up and it's not there. I cleaned up my entire home, just searching for it, ended up not finding it in time, but I did oh, have did a cat. You not? No, I, I have a cat that. that's really good at moving things around. And I constantly forget where, you know, I take for granted where I keep things. So I still don't know where that document is. However, I found a good in between to still be able to get my stuff done. So oh, good. no major foul, but it is frustrating. One of these days, I'm going to be cleaning up or moving out of my place, and then I'll find behind my refrigerator, like that piece of paper. I'll be like, "Oh, that's where it was." Uh-huh. It'll yeah. be one one yeah. unsolved mystery that I'll be happy to to resolve in my in my life. Right, Larry, how you been? Oh, been doing fine. I've been playing a new game. <laughs> nice. What's up? Yeah. It's Metro Exodus. Okay. It, okay. It, okay. It again is a shoot first person shooter, uh, and takes you to the a post war Russia. Yeah, and uh, hmm. it's it's very interesting, very good game. I highly recommend it to anybody. Is it scary? Likes first person shooters and open world. Yeah, is uh, it exploration. Creepy? Is it creepy or scary? Like, is it is it? Oh, open? it has its points. It's times that it that you're in the dark and it's just spiders everywhere and, and it. zombies and just uh, mutants mostly, not zombies. But yeah, I like to say I recommend it. It's very good. Let it be well known that I cannot High quality scary games. Yeah. I can't handle scary games. I just does too many bumps in the night for me, especially here. <laughs> Riv, River Song, oh. how you been? Love to catch up with you. Uh, well, you know, to follow on the the gaming trend, uh, I I've, I've been diving a little bit into the well, speaking of me, uh, playing the words off the hill diver too. But yeah, it's been a fun good. game. Yeah, it's uh, the drama with some devs. You know, that's been fun. Uh, I'm waiting for Dragon's Dogma 2 to come out on the 22nd, which is a wow. sequel I've been waiting for for about 10 years. Wow. But, uh, uh, very excited for that. Cool. And um, Don't tell River it's a, it's a trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's oh, there's so much to it I could rant, rant on about. But uh, other than that, just keep on with classes and uh, uh, about to go into spring break hoping to catch up on things with my seemingly never ending um but goal in sight sure uh, the degree so well speaking of Very cool. dragon's dogma i said speaking of dogma how about we talk about and dump on christianity for a little bit i had a question that was brought into us uh, this was from an email and it kind of put me into a, a spiral let me pull it up again so We have ways of reaching out to us. You can reach out to us through um, our our email pages as well as on our YouTube pages. We'll give the links at the end of the show. You can just get to there. But we had one question presented by, let me see if I can pull this up. Let me see if I can pull this up in time. There it is. 
uh, Dan Gleeballs, <laughs> who said that uh, the term woke should be used exclusively by religious folk, but they don't because they don't even understand it. And uh, in the in that in that term or in that comment alone, I was thinking, what did it, what was the meaning behind this? And then I it suddenly dawned on me that yeah, it should make a lot of sense for and we'll define it in, uh, as we go. But it should make a lot of sense that Christians should have been the first people to present or support woke or right. the other terms of or conditions that society comes up with every now and then that are all about treating people more civilly, civil rights. Black Lives Matter, uh, hippies, like anti-war, peace. Like there are so many trends that when they come out, Christ conservative Christianity is always on the opposite end of and try to villainize or look at with suspicion or mock. And I I found like woke is just another example of currently where its state is at right now is in a really interesting spot because it should have been something that Christians should have been backing from the very beginning and still back now. And as it becomes more gradually accepted as like a compassionate and empathetic way of treating people, um, I think Christians will go from hating it to mocking it to pretending they came up with it in the very first place and have pictures of Jesus wearing a woke shirt as he's being crucified. It's like, <laughs> you see, he loved woke all yeah. from the very beginning. We were the woke. Yeah, people. there are probably already churches that are doing that. <laughs> oh no yeah the branding is just the so the, the liberal churches and there are out, they're out there mm. oh and also i see uh in some cases families and friends i'll see things like my religion doesn't discriminate i'm thinking like do you know your religion yeah <laughs> but, right 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 uh -huh. they didn't so, mean the best but yeah how about we I do mean, one, how about we do one term at a time and just have a quick definition on what woke means to the three of us is that cool Larry, would you mind? Yeah, well, for me, it's compassion and empathy for your fellow man, no matter who he is, Ooh. whether he's in group or out group or a different color or whatever. It's it's caring for the others. Yes. And, you know, Christianity to me sells that concept, but but doesn't act upon it. Mm. Very seldom do they act upon it. I mean, they, they give it lip service. They do some services, but when they do those services, like feeding the poor, you know, having soup kitchens, they always say, look at us, you know, this is what we're yeah. doing. And oh, please yeah. bow your head and pray. Yeah. While everyone you know, else they, is hungry, he's yeah. still in line, mm -hmm. you know, hold right. everyone hostage so you can they, That's right. put a stamp on it. Uh -huh. That really made me upset, by the way. I went to a, a food bank, sort of bag up a bunch of food. And there was a line of cars getting ready to like pick up the bags of groceries that we prepared. And I'm an atheist, right? So I'm like there on my knees making assembly lines, trying to make everything more efficient and, and be able to bag. And then the cars are ready to go. We have all the food lined up. And then like three pastors come up and like, let's bow our heads and pray. And then the mm -hmm. other guy's like, my name's Pastor Blah, Blah, Blah. Feel free to come to our church. We're on the corner of XYZ mm -hmm. and XYZ. Let's bow right. our heads and pray. And I'm like, all right, can we get back to it? And then the third pastor comes up. By the way, I'm the church of blah, 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 blah. We're in blah, blah, blah. And we're going to, guess what, guys? Right. Bow our heads and pray. And I'm looking <laughs> at the lines of the families. And they're just like, when are we, can we, can we go and get food? Yeah. Which brings up another point. They tend to want to sell to the people who are desperate. I yes. mean, out there, you know, clutching at straws, trying to yeah. survive. But mm. in comes religion. Oh, we can help. But right. you have to yeah. follow our dogma. You have to come to right. our church. You have to give you know, to our mission. Right. Et cetera, et cetera. a person dying of thirst and you have right. like, it's, a tr it's and you're like, transactional. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Say my name. It's like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Give me a quarter. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, and the mm -hmm. whole notion of, of missionary work. I mean, I have friends and family that, you know, they, they, they constantly do missionary work and so on, but it's just an interesting concept of part of it, the, helping out uh you know villages and neighborhoods that are you know less supplies and that's good but that's always bundled in with trying to spread the spread their message too right it's, it's just you know like priorities it always it always gets yeah. up there yeah it's right. clearly not what you call it altruistic the the design and the engineering behind it is to self purport or self what do you call it uh continue whatever dogma in society it's it's propaganda at the end of the day it's you are you are a vehicle of propaganda when you try to go to like um in my mind a salvation army or 
uh, a food bank that's run by Christianity or Alcoholics Anonymous, anything that pretends to be like genuinely caring about helping people, but are really about just advertising a message that is in a lot of ways harmful to to people long term. But uh, Riv, that was a bit of a tangent. Wanted to know what's your yeah. impression of uh, woke? What does it mean to you? So it definitely incorporates how Larry was putting it, but also I think what I focus on that more about is kind of keeping up with the zeitgeist of, um, okay, now we understand these new things. Let's adapt to those new things. And at the, and at the base of it all, treat people well, um, understand that there are differences, understand we have, we have instincts, we have biases, um, but just taking in the best available data we have and incorporate it into, okay, well, let's go with that and treat people well in the process. So something like that. You know? I like that. Um, you know, when you, when you say it like that though, would you say then that hmm, you couldn't have woke without an understanding of both your interactions with other people? Like, is it in your mind possible to be woke on an Island by yourself or like without being engaged with people? Like, doesn't it require to an extent, some sort of recognition that you're part of the society or like you're interacting with people? Can you be, River, I'm gonna keep talking because it's a radio show. No, 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 I would say that would, that would be, I mean, it's, it's there's a whole bunch of one person on an island, two person on an island scenarios. Mm. Um, being woke, I, th I definitely, I think it depends on, uh, at least how I think of it is, you know, usually in the, in the political sense of it's often mocked and everything, but really I think it's just keeping up with the times and, and that is a societal context. Um, but, you know, another way you could be work on an island, <laughs> but I, I tend to think of it as just, you know, accepting what have we, what we've learned, incorporate into this, yep. incorporate into daily life and, uh, and then not change or maybe use it to enhance our empathy Ooh, and uh to continuously yeah. improve our empathy yeah. i like it i'm i'm gonna shut both of you guys down because it's clearly <laughs> what woke is is a bible it's a bible thing it's clearly in the bible well, well maybe then some of the new testament it is not, the new testament not the old testament it is <laughs> we don't talk about the old testament this is this is sunday we no one talks about the old testaments on sunday you know this mm -hmm. all right so matthew 7 12 had it best in my mind it's um in all things do to others as you would have them do unto you, or as what Christians would call it, the golden rule. Doing to others what they'd have do to you is sort of just a recognition of the empathetic nature behind being woke or recognizing plight of others, recognizing the consequences of your action, trying to be more thoughtful with the way how you interact with people and try to improve quality of life, right? In the essence of just not being a jerk to people and, rec and having a little bit of... Um, reason for other people's situations and issues and recognizing like, hey, it's not equal. We're trying to do the best we can for each other. I'm going to try to treat you how I would want to be treated if I was in this situation and, and try to make the world a little bit better in that place. Christians hate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, so why, so, you know, why do Christians not, why do especially conservative Christians um, not like the concept of being woke? And it's so weird because it seems like Jesus was like one of the the billboards of wokeness back in his day. Like he, these are words that came out of his mouth, uh, purportedly from uh, his uh, followers. But the whole idea is there tends to be a, a cycle where a movement occurs uh, or starts to begin, like woke or hippies or Black Lives Matter. Or so many other things about like civil rights or treating people in a better way, respecting women, understanding plights of women. It like it starts slowly, and conservative Christians tend to hate it. They they look at it with suspicion. Same thing happened with hippies and their anti-war movement. Same thing happened with Black Lives Matter. Same thing is going on right now with woke. But then eventually the movement becomes more popular, right? It becomes part of like a larger zeitgeist, and Christians go from hating it to just openly mocking it. Now it goes from, oh, all these woke people or all these, you know, suspicious people talking about like black lives. They don't understand X, Y, Z. What about, uh, well, now we just make fun of them. It's like, oh, you're being woke. Look how woke you're being. That You're this, the W word. You're, you're being silly and I don't have to respect you as much. I understand that you exist, 
but doesn't mean that I have to recognize you as something as equal as me. I'm going to put you down a little bit by using your own terms against you. Yeah. Eventually, the, the woke that, mind virus. There you go. There you go. Or no. look at these hippies over there. They are not contributing to society. They're out burning flags and stuff, and 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 standing up for their civil rights and on my First Amendment for speech and blah blah blah. Uh, finally, movement becomes part of the society. Like it becomes part of the bedrock and societal norm and well respected, somewhat well understood too. And Christians then go from hating it to mocking it to just taking credit for it. Mm -hmm. God always loved woke people. God always loved gay people. God is all about Black Lives Matter. Here's a picture of Jesus on a cross with a Black Lives Matter t-shirt on. Look at <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Check out that branding. It's only 10 bucks. Um, yeah. Christians will take credit for it when it becomes part of the societal norm. And I find that to be a frustrating, reoccurring cycle that we are always in. In fact, right now, I think we're in the mock phase of woke, but it won't be long before it, it curves back into something where Christians are like, well, don't you know who the first woke guy was? Abraham. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. King David. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a sermon waiting to happen. That's a yeah. sermon waiting to happen, Larry, and you know it. But well, yeah. you know, they'd have to say Jesus because, like I say, the Old Testament is, has very few woke people in it. It'll be Moses. It'll be Moses. And he's like, don't you know how woke Moses was when he was like, listen, I, 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 I talked to a burning bush and I think slavery is a bad thing. And that's why I'm going to free the slaves. Only because they were slaves, yeah. <laughs> according yeah, to the Bible, not according sure, to history. Sure. Well, Larry, well, there like was something that... on this. Go for it. I'm going to go on. Oh, I, I was just going to say, there's something that came to mind about that is a, a friend of mine, he's a, a pastor for a long time now, he would say uh, something about the, the, sermon, the, the sermon of the Mount, is that mm. the people left in droves when the hard sayings came, and how it starts out all nice, um, but then it starts talking about the fulfillment of the law, and then it gets a little bit negative, and the droves, the, the people left in droves and the hard sayings came, and so the, it's that kind of selectiveness mm. that People like to use, I think, not everyone, of course, there's samples, it's generic, you know, not to broad brush, but there does seem to be a, a common trend there is, um, you know, it's nice to wear the, you know, the Jesus combination with pride shirts and all these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's very selective. So, mm. it's, you know. So I did look up, um, this is a thing that actually exists. You can get little flags for your front porch and there's even a flag that has jesus holding an american flag on it <laughs> in front of a cross like well, you know he came to america like 400 a.d oh yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely according but, to uh mormonism but there's yeah. also the same picture of jesus holding the american flag but it's a gay flag it's a pride mm. flag it's a black lives matter flag and in my mind my brain just slowly begins to like boil and like pop a little bit because i figure <laughs> people are buying this there's a market where a guy was like no more skews <laughs> <laughs> and somewhere there's some house that has it i'm not sure if they bought it uh tongue and cheekly just to annoy their other neighbors or because they genuinely believe like these are our messages that are touted but you know how the bible is sort of set up where you know your interpretation largely dictates how you can uh, what the Bible ultimately says to certain people. Yeah, it's a, it's totally a Rorschach test. Right. You can totally pick up the book and be like, God was always woke. God always supported Black lives. God mm -hmm. always wanted there never to be wars, right? God hates people fighting. God loves families of, and God loves diversity and thinks women should be in charge. Yeah. Like you can say all that and you can have a flag, you can draw a picture to represent it. But the fact of the matter is, is like we have a historical track record of Christianity always starting out typically on the wrong side, right? And then having to kick and fight and scream like a kid being dragged out of Toys R Us back to yeah. This you word, can imagine the, the preachers in <clears throat> excuse me in the South in pre war pre Civil War days, you know, yeah. taking the Bible and preaching that God loves slavery, you know, otherwise you why would he allow it? Right, right. You have states talking about how much they love slavery when they're explaining why they want to leave the mm -hmm. union. They're just like our. Well, that was that was that, that was the argument back in the well, you know, before the the switch. 
yep. between the parties switched. Mm -hmm. That was the argument. But well, look, it's defended in the Bible. So. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. And now, when you think about when now when slave uh, civil wars talked about it, 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 it comes down to something where it's like, no, God always hated slavery. It was a war about state rights. Yeah, that was what people about really what? Yeah, about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> states rights to do what? Yeah. That's enough questions. Go to the back of the class. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Guys, I think are we how are we close? Are we close to the bottom? Oh, we're now? only 20 minutes in. Okay, so fantastic. I have um this idea of um do as to others as you would have them do unto you is a woke concept. Uh in my mind, when I hear what is all this woke nonsense, I think it might work well to remind people who who might say that. Well, it's the exact same thing from the Bible if they're biblically inclined. And say, like, you know, Matthew 7, 12, it says, do as others as you'd have them do unto you. That's generally what woke means. And then see if that works. I wonder if that might stick. To yeah, them. no limitations, though. I mean, there's no limitations for color of skin, gender, uh, gender reassignment, or any of that. It's just love your neighbor. Yeah. Just love your neighbor, dude. Yeah. And here's my flip side to it. When I stop taking wokeness seriously is when it becomes like Christianity. Now, here's the flip end to it. Like when woke, when people select groups of people and like uh, uh, who go from, hey, you should just like people, you should you should understand people and be more compassionate too. You have to be like this or you're a bad person. Or if you don't think mm -hmm. like how I think, you're clearly inferior to how yeah, I If you think. don't choose the passages from the Bible that I choose, then yes. you're not a real Christian. I've taken on a Milton esque like interpretation yeah. of this yeah. word, yeah. turned it into a dogma and ruined it fun for everybody. And now I'm the bad guy. It's like right. now I'm leaving because now you're like Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> did you see did you see the video where uh, uh Taylor Swift was telling her family mm -hmm. that uh she had to be woke? In other words, she had to care for her fellow man. And one of her reasons for doing that was because she's a Christian. And she's identifying now, um, I don't know if she ever didn't identify with it, but uh, she was identifying with the woke side, saying the position of the Christianity these days, according to like MAGA and their ilk, is wrong. And I want to be on the right side of, of history because I'm a Christian. And that was her, her go-to. This is why she wanted to be woke, uh, yeah. care for her fellow man, and, and uh and change society for the better. So, it, you know, it can be used either way you want to, but it, Jesus would have wanted us to go that way, you know, according yeah. to what he says in the book. I always, and, I don't know for whatever reason, I I always still, it's, it says a lot about me, but whenever someone brings up Taylor Swift and she says something, I always, and I, and I hear it and I'm like, I agree with maybe about 80% of what she said, but like that concerning 20%, is going to be a problem. And yep. then I always compare what she says to something Kanye West recently said. <laughs> hmm. Who I always find like the diametric op like opposite spectrum. Opposites. Where it's like, yeah. I disagree with 80% of what he says, but there's a real kernel of truth. 20% <laughs> of yeah. that. That's like undeniable it, that people don't want to like recognize. And so like- It's the nature of poetry, you know? <laughs> <laughs> And so, like, when uh, Taylor Swift is like, hey, I don't want to be mean and rude to people and judge people because I'm a Christian. Or I'm racist. Like, I'm almost with you, but, like, there's some things that I would have, like, some follow-ups just with regard to, like, the track record of Christianity. I'm glad that you're morphing it. Like, you're on the mm -hmm. you're on the top-down approach of, like, yeah. standard Christianity. Yeah, yeah. If, she, if she just went on that extra step and just gave right. up Christianity all along, she right. could be as compassionate and empathetic as she wants to be. Right, right, right. No right. limit. And when Kanye West says, I am literally Jesus, I'm like, that's 80% not true, but you are a black guy. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to. It's like, I'm pretty sure Jesus wasn't like some Italian looking guy. Now, I think we should ask some extra questions here. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Plus, who would, how would you know? How would you know? How would you know? How would you know? Like, if Jesus was coming back, how would you actually do that test and figure that out? All right. Wouldn't he be a rapper that would claim he's Jesus? Like, wouldn't that make the perfect sense? Like, what else was Jesus doing? He wasn't making chairs. He was talking yeah. to people and holding concerts. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Yeah. And why is everybody wearing crosses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a 20% <laughs> con. There's, I'm not saying I'm 100%. I'm just saying 20% of me is like, there might be something to this. We should check this guy out. Anyway, uh, how about now? <laughs> yeah, we probably need to take a break. Okay, cool. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio. 
103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dowder Five, and we're on WOZO Radio at 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 24th year. And 24th year? No, 22nd year. Right. Yeah. And we have over 1,100 members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening at Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us in inside at the high top table or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. You can find us on Facebook, meetup.com, or our website at knoxvilleatheist.org, or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to a meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start one. one. Right. Wombat, where do we want to pick up? All right, so we had a pretty cool conversation about woke. We went over our definitions, found out that it's largely about being compassionate and empathetic. Empathetic, same as like what Matthew seven twelve would tell you: do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Yet Christians hate it because they tend to follow trends and they always end up on the wrong side of the trend because they're disconnected from society as a whole. And I would love for them to transition to a point where they become more ingratiated with how people live and concerns with you know people's wellness and welfare and quality of life and that only happens when they further walk away from their dogma and if it takes taylor swift to do that for them <laughs> so be it i will i will gladly support the charge though i have my concerns past that fact and if jesus if Kanye west wants to say i'm jesus and a very few people believe him i'm like all right i'm with it because it takes us away from like the worst <laughs> version of jesus which is the biblical version so at the end of the day it's all gravy riv comments and do you have a follow-up topic oh yeah no i just it's you know at the end of the day it's the power of narratives throughout society that history is one of the most you know stabilizing forces and so um kind of along that along that factor um i, I came across some days ago watching a video and i misunderstood it from the original call to action from it but but what I thought was the original call, I think, is more interesting. And that was um, the reality of the political system in the United States, right? You know, we have yeah, county by county, it's all mixed and everything. But at the end of the day, when states go to the Electoral College, at, you know, they have the vote, it's either a red state or a blue state, or at least for the two-party system. And the call I thought was interesting is because in terms of getting aid much needed overseas and timely people, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's famine going on. It, we're on the brink and there's some people who are being resilient uh, and uh, very obstinate with their votes and so on blocking procedures. Um, and so the call, as I thought an original originally to be was call into a representative, but say you're a Christian and that might make them care more. And I mm. thought, I thought that's probably true if you give them the demographics in the yep. southeast, especially. That's probably true. And I'm thinking, how how poignant is that? That you just call in to say, "I'm a, I'm one of your people. Please vote this way." Yeah, yeah you know, mean, it it sounds right, but I mean, the the demographics of of Christianity uh, so often are, yeah. But what kind of Christian are you? Right. I mean, like Baptists won't listen to Catholics, even though they are Christian. Um, it's just one sect after another. There's what thirty thousand different sects of Christianity, and when they say they're Christian, uh, they might, you know, pick up for a minute. But if you start spouting things that are opposite their dogma, mm. I think they're going to shut down. It's also you guys got to realize that the appeal to Christian from a religious point of view only works if gerrymandering stays a thing and if you don't know what gerrymandering mm. is it's when you bisect a, a population a geogra geographic population based on 
how many people who vote a certain way, let's just group them up and as the opposition in like one big cluster. And then we'll have several smaller clusters that can outweigh that large cluster's vote. So even if there's more people living in Nashville by a huge margin compared to like other counties surrounding Williamson, Maury County, et cetera, right. we're going to make sure that they have the smaller counties have just as much sway as Nashville. And when it comes to voting, there's enough smaller rural areas that have an oversay of what the big say, even though it's like 7 million people to like 70,000, right? But mm -hmm. here's the problem. As culture of those small towns begin to blossom, as people commute from the large Nashville from smaller rural towns, they start to trend to trickle out not only their ideologies, but their culture. And in a two pack, in a two impact system, people who like move to Nashville uh, who who have to who move to like a, a smaller neighboring country a county so they can just commute up, they bring their culture with them, and those smaller rural areas get the impact of a cool nice family that might be pretty diverse or new businesses that are are coming into their town that move in and cause more people to come in uh, and and change up ideas and next thing you know you can see it on a maps like these weird um, broadening of a uh, blue from these metropolitan metropolitan areas into more <laughs> rural areas and gerrymandering has can't keep up with it there's no way they can like configure their system yep. it's sort of like how georgia was blue last year it's sort of like how nashville davidson county is beginning to spread out to all the more rural areas and i when mm -hmm. i look at my window right now there's a lot of new homes being built because we have a new factory and a bunch of new businesses coming to our town and i'm happy to see it because it's sort of the effect that happens when people understand the potential of congregation getting and understanding people and and uh, putting money into property taxes so schools can be funded like this is progress it's progress at the mm -hmm. very end of at the end of the day and so i'm happy to see you know when culture advances and the 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 unneeded sections begin to like shrivel up and die out so i'm hoping that will be the case anyway that's my thought process <laughs> Sorry. well let me really tag on into that i loved the progress but a portion of me is afraid because i'm worried about the backlash of people when you mm. have progress so that's always Ooh. in the back of my mind you know? yeah 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 that though yeah i totally hear you there should be a pain point because while there's with civil rights wouldn't have as good sticking if there weren't videos of people being blown with ho 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 uh, hoses or the signs mm -hmm. of the separate but equal on two water fountains that are clearly not built the same way or mm -hmm. you know buses with the signs being like blacks in the back whites in the front like i you need to have the i it's good to have that pushback because it ingrains it into society why it matters and why mm -hmm. it's fragile like everything that we take for granted in terms of peace in terms of democracy in terms of like having well uh, like a, a nice country where like even if I get injured, I know I can go to a hospital. Like all these systems that we have in place, taxes, foundations of our you know society as a whole are fragile and can change at any moment. Mm -hmm. So they're worth keeping. And you don't remember that until you see the effort that it took to get into it and be reminded of it every day. Small example, scientific example. I went to Sweden. There, you you don't realize this, but the idea that Americans landed on the moon is not a popular concept outside of America. <laughs> You think yeah. in America, we joke and laugh about it, like those people who don't think we land on the moon. When you leave America, that's actually like it goes up from like one percent of people to like 30 percent of people, even in scientific concepts, like in, in circle talks. I well, so don't believe it. They don't believe it. And I've spoken huh. I've spoken to people who are from largely India and Pakistan are like, no, that didn't happen. I'm like, whoa, really? You, I actually think that. And what they present to you is like, look at this thing. Look at this picture of this thing. Do you think this is a thing that can go up into space and like right. land on something and then come back up? And you look at what they're showing you and it looks like this weird Dixie cup covered in foil <laughs> with two yeah. thick legs. Like the the shuttle that landed on the moon didn't look very fancy or impressive, but it was simple by design, right? And only had the parts that it absolutely needed on and it. And rudimentary computer. Oh, sure did. Yeah, exactly. They bring up all that stuff. And then mm -hmm. it makes me realize, you know, if you don't see the fight, if you don't, or if you aren't reminded of the impact on a near monthly or daily basis, you sort of take it for granted. So if you saw a jumbo jet, if you saw a 747 and you're like, that flies, you'd be like, that's way too heavy. And the wings don't even flap. There's no way a machine <laughs> that flies. But if you see enough as you're driving, as you're walking down the street, flying through the air, you just, it becomes part of your 
it kills your your doubt because you see it so constantly. The same thing needs to happen for the the freedoms that we take for granted that that are offered to us through our political process. We need to be reminded of the effort that it took to get onto them. And I think through that, we will recognize how fragile our current democracy is and be more engaged in order to protect it moving forward in the future and represent ourselves uh, uh, with the full fervor as it requires. Well, like in Germany, you know, they have all those signs up that uh, show kind of a constant re reminder of the past. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very good. And yeah, it's crazy. Like, cause America now has like better Nazis than Germany at this point. Yeah. Germany... yeah we had our phase as well. That was, yeah. you know, that was a <laughs> dark time, yeah. but I always well, liked I... it. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I always like when we're talking about Nazis and stuff, I always like to bring up this quote. Um, we tolerate no one in our ranks who attacks the ideas of Christianity. Our movement is Christian. That was Adolf Hitler in 1928 in one of his uh, speeches. Yes, very true. Not only that, but like if you think of like the Ku Klux Klan, that's also mm -hmm. uh, uh, fun. Uh, religious. They don't burn crosses for nothing. <laughs> they don't burn yeah. crosses because they're like, we don't know what these things represent. We don't know yeah. what this is all about. Yeah. Enjoy it's a there. burning Thanks. cross for a reason. Yeah. Mm. You know, I'm going to throw this random story out too. Um, my favorite version of Superman is the radio version of Superman, like way back in the, I think I'm going to say mm. 1970s, 1960s, where it was just a radio drama show where it wasn't about the fact that Superman was an alien or he had laser vision or he fought people like he was just a good guy. He was a guy that was raised right and he had good values and he inspired other people to be good. And so like this, there's the most classic version of his uh, radio story was a journalist. It's based off a journalist story where a journalist figured out that the Ku Klux Klan, who were at the time getting into Congress, you know, being elected as officials and proudly representing their KKK association. And a journalist actually, you know, infiltrated in the group and realized, whoa, this is a very toxic club. They have very insincere ideologies that they're espousing that are actually probably harmful for a majority of a, a lot of the people that are in America. It seems like it's beneficial for white people, but it's only white men. Like it's not for the benefit of anybody. Like this is really bad and we should find a way to get Americans to stop liking this group. How can we do that? Since I'm just one guy, I can't just write a newspaper story and expect people to read it. I know I'll make a Superman story about it where Superman is a journalist as well. And he'll find out that the KKK is actually a bad club. And he'll just be like, well, that's bad, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> people will be like, yeah, screw the KKK. <laughs> Superman hates them. He does. And yeah. he'll, and that's basically just the, the power of a person that, is seen as like a good person it, it didn't need he didn't need to be bulletproof to like present that he was just like a guy working against with his journalistic integrity and integrity as a good human being like so yeah kkk bad but also one of the f examples very of a myriad examples of christianity starting out on the completely wrong end of a of a societal concept and then having to be forced forced literally dragged to a point where they're they're more reasonable and accepted with their points of view in society that can actually function. And then they just turn around and be like, no, but we were always like this. And the followers and the ardent people who support them are like, no, that's true. They were always like that. That's why we need the videos and the recordings and the pictures, the documentation of the speeches that they were used so that we right. can remind them, no, <laughs> that's not the case. When they do protests and they're and, or when we have like uh, gay or pride walks and stuff like that. And people are like, yeah, pride for people. And their Westbound Baptist Church shows up with their with their signage and they're like, God hates. And they'll use the F words and stuff like that. And the idea is like, oh, those guys shouldn't be here. I'm so happy they're there because they're mm -hmm. the only people accurately representing the book that they 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 believe in and they shouldn't be held as a point of mockery they should be held as a this is an accurate representation of what this ideology looks like and if you look at that with disgust that should be the proper reaction that we're not we shouldn't tell them to go home we should remind ourselves that this is what happens when you don't ingratiate yourself into society well and understand the consequences of your actions right, right. my thoughts larry anything to add to that no, it's just, uh, you know, you're right. We just need to get the word out that, that compassion and empathy is what woke means and what and what we support. And, mm. and Christianity, not so much. 
Mm. I mean, even though they give you lip service. Also, like the idea of doing unto others as you would have them do unto yourself is not an idea that came up originally even in the Bible. Like a lot of different societies had that. Confucianism had a version of it called do not impose on others what you do not wish to for yourself. Mm-hmm. Unless if you believe in a Christian <clears throat> Jesus that also, you know, went to China a couple of a hundred years earlier. <laughs> yeah, actually I had a class recently uh, about ancient Chinese philosophy. Mm. And we went over Confucius, uh, Lao Tzu, uh, Mao Tzu, um, you know, went over, you know, in the Tao Te Ching. And yeah, this is this is nothing new of a concept of yep. just that basic reciprocity um, yes. and, you know, uh, treatment of recognizing of circumstances um, within within your group and within out within, you know, out of the group. Yep. And uh, and then they mentioned earlier about, you know, the. It reminds me of Taylor Swift, right? You know, <laughs> if, if in some cases, if that's what can become a beacon for some, if that's what it takes for some cases, then hey, uh, then I'm, I'm glad for it. Um, yeah, same thing with Superman, you know, you know? like you if know. It's, it's Taylor Swift for some people to get people to be better, fine, whatever. It takes, yeah, it's going to take a building block or I'll build momentum, hopefully, for them to be able to be like, you know what, I actually don't need Christianity to be a good person. That would be the the true chain unbreaking. But if it's Taylor Swift before then, I'm totally fine with that. Well, and on, on top of that, I think it's the major part, and this, you know, we don't have time for it, but the the major thing about the, the Christian uh, anchor, I guess, the root mm-hmm. of it all, yeah. is the fear associated with the notion of afterlife and so on and so on. So yeah. that's that's the that's the poison of it, is mm-hmm. my opinion. That's the poison of it. If you can if you're raised in a situation, some people Christians are raised, as I understand it, where fear isn't, it's not really a big thing. It's its kind of like, yeah, that's metaphorical. I no. was raised Southern Baptist, so I was very much fire and brimstone, and that's a poison in my mind that constantly mm. offers constant fear and so on and so on. Even though I can logically separate it, it's still rooted, and it's, you know, so that's, that's a big element of it, but, I, you know. I'm going to throw something down, too. I, I thought about this, but the idea of there's no there's a fear of death but there's also a lack of appreciation for life if you believe in the afterlife and that's fed in so yes you do fear for whatever reason hell because you don't want to go to hell but because you know that there's an afterlife or at least are convinced that there's one you don't really treat this life with any inherent Mm -hmm. value or at least Mm -hmm. the to the optimal level and so you can get away with being rude to people or saying really unkind things or being judgmental or categorizing people and saying, I'm never just going to, I'm never going to talk to these people. I'm never going to eat these foods. I'm never going to have sex in this particular way. I'm never going to watch this episode of Pokemon. <laughs> I just have a bag of things I'm never going to do because this life doesn't matter. This is the real afterlife that matters. And then they die and you'll never hear or see from them again. They'll never yeah. have that body again. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, what's, one what's of the really, most. <laughs> what's really okay. bad is, I mean, I've actually heard it. Christian preacher, um, uh, this is online, not in person, say that, you know, we shouldn't have to worry about being good to these sinners, mm. uh, you know, the the homosexuals and, and all that, because they're God's firewood. And, you know, it's just, cool. uh, just dismissing them as humans. And this is supposed to be the, the essence of their Christianity. Yeah. How does that work? Right. It, and, well, I mean, and I'll say really quickly, I didn't... support Jesus' words. I'm sorry, Rib, go ahead. No, no, I, I I keep on mistiming it. I was just on that moment. I was going to add to it that I've heard a, a constant apologetic point um, is that well, if uh, none of this matter, you know, basically it's if if there is an afterlife. Doctor Turek makes this point um, in a hypothetical. Well, if there isn't an afterlife, then you know, you know, what matters? None of this matters. You can do anything you want. It's it's all. It's kind of the old, you have to have the afterlife Christianity model mm. to make any yeah, kind I've heard of that. I've heard that quite yeah. a bit. Mm-hmm. When I, in reality, it's just the opposite. If it's something is rare, opposite. it's extremely valuable. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. So like, you know, I mean, the story's in the Bible, like the lady who gave up her last three coins for like mm-hmm. some sort of like homage compared to a millionaire at the time. 
who who gave up a, the same amount of value. Like those coins mean more because you have less of it. If you have an infinity of life that you will experience, then I would agree that this life does not matter whatsoever. If that's in fact, if that was absolutely true, then literally nothing that you do in this life has any meaning or representation of who you'll be in the long term because you'll be living for infinity somewhere else, right? But if that isn't the case and you have a fixed amount of life, a century at most, you know, that is, in my mind, the 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 most precious as a human being? Are you kidding me? In like in the in this modern era where we can have I know this sounds crazy, but like cars that drive themselves. I just drove back from Nashville and my car was like, I can do it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I'm the whole time I'm like, I don't trust you. Oh my gosh, you're you okay, okay. I'm keeping my hands on the steering wheel, but like I don't oh you're doing this too. You're doing the turn. Wow, and you're slowing down. This is better than how I drive. You're <laughs> my car's a better driver than me. And so like it's mind blowing the the level of luxury that we have as human beings as the uniquely that we can experience this like birds are still doing the exact same thing they're sitting on branches in the rain we are always mm -hmm. improving our lives we're always doing cool things and we're working on it ourselves you know all these tools that we developed are stuff that we made and that is so cool and that there's so much more and that that derivation of science and engineering came from a better understanding of a universe that we can test to the point where we're confident enough to put that in cars to improve society and welfare of people on roads which tend to be the one of the major causes of death like we're reducing that making it more safer so that more people can engage with the people other people all across this beautiful country like that's a huge purpose statement that people can get through just with education and better understanding of the world. I just find that to be so purposeful that if someone told me, well, by the way, there's no after I'm like, who cares? Like my life right now has so much value. Like so much stuff that I'm doing right now has a purpose that will live on past me. There will be a legacy of it. I love this. This is cool. And if it's only for a temporary, yeah, well, if, if nothing else, you have the purpose of making the world a better place for the people who follow. Exactly. Yeah. Because that's the only thing people are going to actually have tangibly after you die anyway. They won't mm -hmm. know exactly who you were or all your jokes right. were or and how much purpose, you were. Purpose isn't something that's given to you like a preacher gives you a purpose or the Bible does. It's something that you roll your own. It, you Thank make you. A, you make your own purpose, and it can change many times during your life. Yeah, let's There's make no, that. A, that's no rule the that has to. You have to that's have the, one. Oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Larry. That's no, the what about princess, princess we need. That's the Disney princess we need. That's the okay. Disney princess we need. The one who's like, I make my own purpose. That's right. I want right. that a yeah. song. Well, and, and really quickly, even adding to that notion, I always think in terms of legacy and so on, uh, is, you know, and we're going, we're possibly looking into a, a, a reality of longevity, escape, you know, velocity. But um, even if just within the premise that, well, you know, I have a finite time, um, I'm always reminded of this kind of notion of, uh, basically, I owe to the people of the future in the mm. same way the people of the past owed to me in an endless cycle. Ooh. So it's all about, you know, just a long term reciprocity and paying it forward. So, you know. Right. Responsible people, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Christianity is so self centered. You know, it's just, I've got to do what I need to do to get to the next life. And, mm. you know, and maybe try to get other people to sacrifice their future to get to the next life as well. Right. And it's, it's just so self-righteous, so self-centered. I kind of find like our lives or existence is sort of like a party, right? And the party is all of us together and we're hanging out and there's music going on and somebody brought chips and somebody brought like, I don't know, fondue and dip and stuff like that. And we're just having a good time. Some people are going to leave the party. In fact, everyone's going to leave the party eventually, but more people will come in. But the alarming thing is, even when it's your time to leave, the party's going to keep going. And so there's an ego check that happens when you re recognize, oh, what happens when I leave the party? It's like, well, you're done with parties. <laughs> you're done the party. And you're like, but the party keeps going? It's like, yeah. So don't spend your whole time at the party thinking, oh, this party's going to end. I'm not going to have any fun. This is terrible. In fact, I'm going to make life miserable for other people in this party because eventually we're going to have to leave. That's not a good way to enjoy a party. But likewise, try to find something to bring to the party, You know, whether it's like a mixtape or like some extra food. Mm -hmm. That way, when you leave the party, the party can still keep being better for the next people who come in after you. Like that, mm -hmm. the goal is to keep the party going, right? Not so much and for make you. make it better. Be 
forever and, and, and make it better if you can and, and but at least it clean it up after you yourself. can mm-hmm. yeah don't just yeah. be the wallflower in the back and being like you know it, maybe jesus was making some points it's like well in, in the words of bill and ted be excellent to each other and party on nice you know, dude. nice. <laughs> dudes yeah 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 I'm also going to throw this one out too. In the words, in the words of Akira Toriyama, who passed away uh, mm-hmm. this week, uh, as Vegeta said, "Go wild until you die." <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I, I just I learned about that just recently, and it's still kind of settling in. He, he had so much influence when I was growing up, and oh, absolutely, my, you know, bonding with friend groups, and yep, uh, such an impact. But you know. that's a legacy that I would love to mm-hmm. have left behind so like now we can honor a legacy right because i and and it's always sad when people do leave the party but like if they have a positive legacy that they leave behind that's the stuff that we now are in charge of making sure that we uplift and what he's given us is an opportunity to introduce a lot of other cool people into his, the worlds and culture of like japan and animation yeah. and, can you give us that name again akira toriyama akira Our, toriyama yeah, I'm saying it with an American accent because I'm trying not to sound pretentious, but Akira Toriyama. Toriyama Akira. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Toriyama Hakase. Yeah. Yeah. That guy. Oh, sensei. I have to look him up. The, yeah. And there, there's you know, even a. Oh, go ahead. He, he made not only Dragon Ball, but Dragon Ball Z, but really what also hit me was Chrono Trigger. I remember playing that mm-hmm. from the Super NES. Blew my mind. And there's, I would argue, has yet to be quality, as quality RPGs since that time. There's a lot of them, but very few of them have hit that mark of wow this is insanely cool considering the limitations that existed at the time it's fantastic anyway i want to add a quick quick thing on there um in, in the uh in the my little pony verse uh, fourth generation specifically okay. okay uh there's this movie um as if it, no spoilers it's like right at the beginning for you know it's it's, it's the legend of everfree i still you know will you be lost by time or it, it's um it's Will you do something great with the time that you have here? Mm. Will you make your mark? Will you conquer what you fear? And Ooh. now that's in, I, I love that because it's in context to like being at the camp, but with, be, without the context, it's like it just hits everything else like a brick. And yeah. but one of the parts in the movie is every year the camp that goes up there, they leave something behind for the next camp to enjoy, and that becomes their like their whole camp wide project. So that comes to mind. It's just. Yeah, but you zooming out. I like the message of the the song itself as it applies to life. But, I dig it. Will you conquer what you fear? Yeah. So, so mm. important. If anything, that's a purpose statement in its own right. Yeah, I highly recommend the series by itself. But everyone gets all oh ponies, but no, no, they have they have uh, real grown up kind of perspectives that kind of weave their way into it. Sure, it's sure, just, sure, sure, sure. It's masked in the artwork of ponies, but mm. just like Jean, Jenny Car. Car- Jenny Karvakowski and Powerpuff Girls and Dexter's yep. Lab, Johnny Bravo, Cow and Chicken. He's had some uh, more adult themes to them. Oh, yeah, they're absolutely. just not just cartoons, but yeah. All right, guys. Great show. Let's start closing out. Anything that you'd recommend that we check out, Rush? Uh, River? Uh, uh, I had it. The anime Free Run uh, is coming to an end. Um, okay. it's, been, it's been fantastic so far. Nice. Uh, there's a lot more, but that's one of the ones that come to mind. Um, if we're uh, just if we're geeking out on things from Japan, I would say, uh, in terms of a new ending or an an ending versus a new beginning, the next season of Sentai or Tokusatsu, mm. which is um, uh, Power Rangers in America, but Japan's like maybe 15 seasons ahead of us. Uh, yeah, it's called. Um, uh, Bakuage Boon Boonju, or basically, uh, so explosive race cars, boom, <laughs> vroom, vroom, jer. and baku, it baku. Is yeah, just so it is so back to um having a good time. Like the characters seem really fun. the The first episode was really really fun and fun to watch. The last episode is basically, or the last season was based on Game of Thrones, so it was basically King Oger which everyone was royalty and it was political dealings and everything was very dour and very serious and the stakes were super high. This is just cars, cars, even. And the, the best thing about the show is when they're racing down the road, trying to like shoot each other, the bad guys and the good guys stop 
and follow traffic laws so like old people can cross the streets and then when they finish crossing the streets then they go right back to chasing each other i love how camp it is i think it's going to be a good season i'm looking forward to this year uh yeah. larry anything that you'd recommend or check out um <clears throat> there's a series on netflix called a resident alien yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I did it's check really that out. good also, uh, there's a season. Uh, there's another series called Midnight Cafe. Uh, we were talking about Japanese and Japanese culture. It's a it's a Japanese drama, but it's it's a little more lighthearted than calling it a drama. Ooh. But it's really cool. I, I we really enjoyed the series Midnight Cafe. Cool. Why don't you close on how much you love souls, Larry? <laughs> Uh, it's hard to love things that don't exist. Oh no! <laughs> but anyway, Use your imagination. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Reminder that everybody can find our shows on podcasts everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour, and if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. My content can be found on digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. Um, my book, Atheism, What's It All About, is on Amazon. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. And, be well, and be well and do good and think critically. Yeah, and be excellent Ooh. to each other. <laughs> and yes. be excellent to each other. How about that? Okay. Good yeah. work to live by, everyone. See you.